Hey guys, TC made with TC Gaming. Just picking up where we left off on the last live stream. We were talking about the action RPG kit, and we were going to go through and uh, change out our character, which we did to Paragon Greystone. So hopefully you guys had a chance over the uh, last couple of days to catch up to this point in the project, and we'll be able to pick up from there. And what I've done is I've gone through and I've color coded the um, files and folders that came with the default. Uh, set up for the action RPG so I, you can make them any color you want to but what I want to do is make them a distinct color so that we know that they were part of the core game and anything that we added into that we've managed we can kind of give that a different color and then new things that we're adding in we can let those be default uh, gray icons so what I added to the project since the last time we talked is I uh, pulled in a medieval dungeon and I also pulled in a craft resource icons package. And both of these can actually be found if you go into the marketplace. And you go in here and uh, under the marketplace they have a section here that's called permanently free. Under the permanently free collection. And uh, if you just browse through here you'll find those assets or you can search for them. The one I got here was craft resources icons from Rexard. And basically the reason I grabbed that is because as we make additional... Uh, potions or items or anything. There's a couple of uh, icons that we can use in here to kind of represent that we have some new things in there and show how that works or any other type of pickup that we're doing. And then the other one um, that I grabbed was the one for the dungeon. And that dungeon is actually, let me see if I can pull it up for you so you see the specific name. That's also under the permanently free collection. And let's see where that's at. Go down through here. I usually flip this on to uh, 100 per page, and it's just easier to find stuff, even though it takes a second to load it up. I don't like the way that this thing bounces back and forth. Um, but anyway, that dungeon in here is called Medieval Dungeon from Infuse Studio, and that's a free environment. And you can download and install that and migrate it into your project. And it has a lot of really nice uh, looks and layouts to it. But the reason we want this is so that we have some place to go from our first level. We're going to basically set this up in such a way that as we play through, we're going to beat our first wave of creatures. And then we're going to have the game teleport us into another area to start from there and play another round. And we'll go through that wave. And when we're done there, we'd go to another place. So as you beat each level of the dungeon or whatever you're playing, you could just teleport on. A couple of different ways to set up what we're looking at, but this was just an easy thing to do, and it's already in there, so I thought you'd want to grab this. But also, the nice thing about this is it's very, um, it's very modular in a way that the meshes and everything that are in here are very minimal, but they make for these huge sprawling levels, and they look great with the Paragon assets and also kind of fit in with the action RPG. So if you get an opportunity, go ahead and download those, get that started. Get that installed to your system, and again, you know, you might want to color code these so we can keep track of where we're at. And just a thing that I also changed since the last one in here, which I'll go through with you guys, is that I went into the game and changed the number of waves that are being spawned in here, just so that I don't have to play through five levels to go to the next level to show you what it is that we're dealing with. So uh, we'll go through that and get everything set up, and we'll make sure that we, we have it the way that we need it to play the rest of the game. So just to show you what we're going for here in the game, we're going to hit the uh, Alt-P button here on the first level and just let our game fire up and see if we have everything set the way that we want it. And let me turn this down some. Last time my video had a little bit too loud of a voice in the background, so I apologize, or the gameplay was too loud. So I've hopefully corrected that with the microphone that you can actually hear what I'm saying. And uh, what I've done is I've only put two waves on here and deleted a couple of assets just so I know where I'm at in the world. These levels are actually streamed, so because of that, um, and I also changed my character mesh, but it's just by picking a different graystone within the same folder. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. What I wanted to do real quick is to beat these two waves. And when I beat the two waves, what we should do is end up teleported into another map section, which is our dungeon level. So I deleted the rocks that were in the center of this room, just playing around with setting up different stuff. All right, here's our second wave now. So if we take these guys out, I'll show you how to change the wave setups and what's actually in those waves. Drink a nice little health potion there. So looking pretty good so far, though. I mean, for something right out of the box with a change to a character kind of got uh, something going on. So wave two is complete. This should load right into our other map now. 
And it should transition this into that new spot. Let's see if it does it. it might be a little slow on the first load. So we'll need to come up with a way to increase the efficiency of that. There we go. It took us into our next level. Lagging a little bit as it loads it up, so that's not real good. Got to be a better way to stream levels in. Now these, uh, this level here, I don't have any uh, mesh for these guys for a nav mesh bounds volume. But what we're worried about right now with a lot of these uh, things is just to make sure that they are functioning and you know we're getting this thing to go back and forth between our different levels. So that's what will happen here once I create uh, complete two waves in this one. It should go back um, to the next area. And I'll show you how this is all set up in the in the blueprint. We'll create maybe another map area and call it uh, map three or whatever. And this one here, I actually did that. I took this level and I just deleted this table over here. So I could tell that this table wasn't in there, that this actually is a third map area. And then if I beat this again one more time, it'll take me to the end game, which basically goes back to the main screen. So this one here will load me back up. I'll start another wave here. You see my table's gone. That was my reference visually that my level's different. I, although I didn't take the things off that were sitting on top of it. Okay. And when I beat these guys... Spoiler alert. This is how you how you beat these guys. You just stand in one spot. <laughs> so. Alright, wave one's finished. It's interesting. I don't remember putting a sword there. Maybe I did. Alright. Wave two, almost done. Sorry, it's taking a little longer than I thought it would to go through these. All right, wave two complete. Now what I should do is go back to another level there, and the game should uh, say that I've won. Game over. I basically beat it. To, it gives my total kills and uh, time count. And then if I were to go to main menu, this main menu would take me back out to the beginning of the game where I could go and change options and things like that. So far, so good. And uh, these couple of errors here are about pending kills. We'll get that cleaned up later on as well. And I'm just going to zoom back out to over here. So basically where those things happen in the game for this is inside of these two areas, game mode, BP game mode, and BP game instance. And the way that you can find that out is if you're in your editor and you go to the world settings for the editor, you'll see in here that you have a uh, BP player controller and a BP game mode. So that BP game mode is really the one you grab that and it takes you out this root folder for blueprints, BP game mode and BP uh, game instance are both right here. So in the BP game mode, this is what basically they have an enemy manager section in here that keeps track of all the wave spawns. And so what we've done here is we just basically said, go ahead and start the enemy spawn. This is all default code. Go ahead and follow all these paths down here. When you get done, you spawn a new wave. Update your timer. When the waves are finished, you start a new wave. And on all waves finished, what we're going to do is we're switching over to casting to our game instance. Because our game instance will now keep track of all the different levels that we're playing. And it goes and gets the game instance reference for the default on this. Um, anytime you cast to an object, you need an object to uh, reference. And typically it's going to be an object of the type of whatever this is. And then we're just saying as the BP game instance, we're going to load the game level. Well, that load game level function or routine or whatever is actually inside of the game instance. So it's going to go over here and call that event load game level down here. Uh, just cleans everything up, fades back in, starts a loading screen, and then we go back to uh, following through here and we check to see if it's the end game, which it's not. If it's not end game, it's just going to grab whatever the current index value is for the level. So we created a variable called level index. This starts out being initialized at zero. Since we, we start the game in our level one, uh, which is that opening map where we were in there fighting uh, with where I took the rocks out. When this comes through, it says, uh, is this the end game? No. Okay, get the index. The index is zero, which is dungeon demonstration, which is the second level I showed you that had the table in it. 
when we get done beating that level, it comes back through here. It says, is this equal to end game yet? No. Index uh, level gets increased. Now it's map level 2, which is just another iteration of that first one with a couple changes in it for visual um, identification that we're in a different spot. And then it goes, uh, you know, comes back through that thing, and it hits option number 2. Finally says, oh, that is the end game. If it's the end game, it hits this false condition, goes down here back to the game mode, and tells it to call the game over function. So when it comes over here and it calls the game over function, which should be somewhere in here, game over, actually I can, I can grab it from over here, and uh, we just double left click it and it'll take us to the event. So in the event graph, game over, comes over here and pauses the game, takes us back out to the in-game finish, and takes us out to that main menu again. And that's uh, basically how this thing's wired up right now. So one of the things we'll change in the future here is we're going to take this. I just put this in to make it quick and easy. If I want to add another level, I just hit add pin and put another name in here for the map. Um, but what we'll do in here is we're actually going to turn this into a data table. We'll store these values in a data table. And then that way, as we add new maps, we could really just export our data table sheet out to something like Google uh, Sheets or Google Docs and update it with you know whatever we want to do and bring that back in and automatically load that up with this level as long as we had the maps and things so that's what we're going to be working on there in the future but uh when we come in here for this branch basically for loading these levels and everything i'm going to blow this up a little bit so you can see it and again this is under level loading logic and we would go in here and go through all these and i'm going to i'm going to walk through these with you one at a time but i just want to blow it up so you can see it for a second kind of get your head wrapped around what's going on load the game level find out if it's at the end game if it's not get the index if that's true you bypass that loop you go over here and open the level and the level is provided by the same set over here whatever the level name is and then we just uh, increment the slot or the level index by one we go back to the game mode and we start the game and then at the end of this if the thing matches end game we call the game over function also back in this game mode blueprint and in the game mode blueprint we're in here so start game is going to call right here and go down through the branch restart the player refresh everything and start the enemy spawns and then uh, of course our game over goes down through here and basically puts us at the end of the the level if we ever hit restart it just restarts the level whatever our current game level is and the other thing I want to talk about real quick in that uh, enemy manager code there, we want to go out and look at our management of those for the files that they're in. So these things are actually stored in, I believe they're going to be in our progression file. And there's a thing in here called waves progression. So if we open this up, this normally has several levels and it. it's got five of them in your version. So I just took some of these out. And the way that these are set up is as you create new waves. If I wanted to add one, I'd just go in here and call this wave three. And so wave underscore three. And what you do is you fill that in down here. So let me save that real quick. And wave three, you come in and you add a spawn group. And then from that, you can pick which enemies are going to be in that and which members of that there are. So the enemies that you can go is you can pick here and say, well, I want to get, let's get a level one goblin and let's get we'll put another one in here. We'll get a level three goblin and let's put another one in here and we'll get our uh, spider boss, you know, or whatever. And you can create these groups, you know, so these will be spawned um, as the third wave of this iteration this group and we're going to do other things we're going to change this so that you know as you go from level one to level two to level three these waves should continue to progress out harder and harder and harder but we might make it where there's just going to be a counter in there that says if the wave is uh, greater than or equal to three then load the next level you know call the end game routine from that load the next level and pick up on wave four five six seven kill that one go on to the next one call you know the next batch of waves so you could do these a couple of different ways and uh that's what we're going to work on in the next video. So I wanted to check my voice, make sure everything was a little bit better in here, show you where we're headed, give you a chance, give you a chance to catch back up on this, and then we'll go over these things in step-by-step -step detail in our very next live stream. Again, my name's TC Made with TC Gaming. Hopefully this uh, gets you guys underway with the Action RPG Kit. And for those of you who are just joining the streams and uh, the videos, please go back and watch the previous one. I apologize again for my voice being so soft and the video being so loud. Hopefully the stuff I was saying there still
still came across. And if it didn't, feel free to ask questions on the pages or to hit me up on my Discord. Always happy to help if I can. And again, there are other group members in there who might be able to answer your questions, even if I cannot. So you guys take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in a future live stream. Take care.